Hi, I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Eye to Eye. Environmental scientist Jesse Azabel is part of an unprecedented effort to put every species known to man, all 1.8 million of them, into an online encyclopedia. He told our Daniel Seberg the Encyclopedia of Life is one-stop shopping for research on all forms of life on the planet. So there are 1.8 million known species in this project? About 1.8 million uh, animals, plants, mushrooms, fungi, uh, and small things, protists, uh, already have names. And our initial challenge is to develop a web page for each of those 1.8 million. We hope to get about half of them done within the next five years and all of them done within ten years. But of course new species are being discovered and, and named all the time and some people think there may be finally eight to ten million forms of life uh, that will have names on Earth. So the Encyclopedia of Life is expandable or extensible and as new species are discovered, uh, the encyclopedia will welcome and embrace them. In fact, one of the sample pages, one of the demo pages we have, is for the Yeti crab, which was discovered only about one year ago in deep water in the, the South Pacific around New Zealand. So that's an example of, uh, uh, of the spirit of the encyclopedia. It's, we, want to, we want it to be a framework that can go on for many, many decades, just as a dictionary keeps adding words. Uh, uh, you know, to, to Google is a new word in uh, the Oxford English Dictionary. So, uh, so the, the Encyclopedia of Life will absorb uh, the, the new species as they're discovered and described. What do you hope that people get from this project? I see it as having two great dimensions. One is just public understanding, access to all this fantastic information. Uh, imagine that every time the name of a plant or animal occurs, someplace on the internet, whether in its common name or in its uh, Latin name, there's a hyperlink to a page in the Encyclopedia of Life. So you're reading an article about global warming and polar bears, and where it says polar bear, there's a hyperlink to this wonderful biography uh, and all this information about polar bears. So at one level, I think it's, it's a tremendous educational resource. At another level, I see it as a macroscope. Biology has advanced over the last 300 years primarily with microscopes, looking in great detail at things. But there are lots of things in the world that are too big to see. There are 1.8 million form, known forms of life. You know, there are uh, enormous numbers of beetles. Well, how can you encompass something that big uh, in your mind scientifically? How can you understand it? And to see these very big things, we need macroscopes. We've, we've seen this with uh, studies in genomics now. How do you study the whole gene, home and gene, human genome with three billion base pairs? You need new tools for mapping, for data management, and so for science we hope the Encyclopedia of Life will be a, a macroscope to help us see life in the large, to see patterns of life in the large. It seems to me it's a reminder too. For anybody who's creating policy or worried about the environment, hey look, this is what we're talking about here. Well I sometimes like to say uh, that the Encyclopedia of Life will give standing to all forms of life. You know, at, uh, at one level, all 1.8 million species will be equal. You know, everyone will have a home page. And yes, so I, I think uh, it, is, it is a reminder of this incredible diversity of life and really how it all exists together. You know, you, the, you know the, whether it's uh, the worms and the trees, whatever, you know, the, 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 uh, or the birds and the worms and the bees or the bees and the apple trees. So it, it is a reminder of, I think, of how connected everything is, that we, you know, we don't just live in, uh, in a world. We, any individual may only know the name of 100 or 200 species, but they're all out there and all part of the fabric of life.